Hey guys, what's going on? Josh here from Polymathics. And today I want to talk to you about one of the most common pitfalls that speakers make during their informative speeches. And honestly, this could also count for um, a persuasive speech, but the area where we see this the most is informative speeches, and I'll get to that in a minute. But first, I want to tell you a story. And this story is kind of an ancient Chinese story. Um, and I'm not going to lie, I'm giving you my version of it, which may not be precisely what's written down in one book, but I'm sure there are several versions of it. This is uh, Josh's, um, you know, abridged version. But essentially, there were two sisters. Um, both of them were very beautiful. One's name was Truth, and one's name was Story. And Truth decided one day that she wanted to go to the uh, the people of this nearby town and tell them um, about this harsh winter that was coming and um, and so when she went out to the town because she wanted to warn them um, so that you know because she truly cared about them so when she when she went to the town, she started walking up to just random people and kind of grabbing them and turning them around and just starting, you know, hey, did you know this fact and next year that this is going to happen and according to statistics X, Y, and Z and she, she had a little chart that had like all these numbers and statistics and she quoted and quoted and quoted and she kept talking and talking and talking and what happened was after about the third or fourth person all the townspeople started to avoid her until they just kind of shut themselves up into their own houses and um and even when she did talk to those first few people after the first 30 seconds or so they kind of lost interest and rolled their eyes turned their heads and even some of them just walked away um and so she could tell like there was this um there was this what's the word um standoffishness right and so then she had an idea she said okay well maybe if i just strip down naked then i'll get their attention and so and truth didn't she 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 didn't dress very appealing um, normally so she figured maybe this is a way to get people's attention so she undressed herself and walked through the town screaming at the top of her lungs trying to get anybody to look but even there at that point where this extremely beautiful woman is walking around town stark naked hooting and hollering it just kind of terrified the people to the point that they didn't they were afraid to even listen to her and so she went back home and she was really disappointed and she spoke to Story about it, her sister. And her sister said, hmm, that's kind of strange. And so she said, okay, wait right here. I'm going to go and, and see if maybe there's something wrong with them, you know, maybe why, you know. So she goes out to the town and she is dressed in very flattering extravagant robes that um you know show her um uh, elegance and royalty because she was related to the king and um and immediately people saw that and she didn't go up to them and grab them by the arm or push them over trying to get their attention she just stood there and as people came to to kind of say hey you you look new are you a stranger in town you know what's going on she she would engage them in conversation and she would ask them questions and find out a little bit about them and you know what the town uh what the what the town people were like what their story was and and then she understood how um how they you know um how the town came about and who you know what the culture was and you know 
how they liked to interact with themselves and things like that. And she, she began to tell them all these nice stories. And, and again, she engaged them. And she had no problem talking to any of them. But the thing is, she didn't have all the information that Truth had. So she went back to the house and she said, Truth, everything's fine. But listen, next time you go over there, wear this. And so she gave her um, the, the garments of story. And Truth put those on. And it was like this nice, like I said, it was, I said it was a robe, but it was like this nice flowing gown that was very, you know, flattering. And, um, and because they were, they were very similar in, in looks, when Truth came out the next time, everybody thought she was Story because she's wearing the same outfit. So they immediately walked up and engaged her. And because Story had warned her not to beat them over the head with facts and figures, but to just engage them in conversation and tell them, you know, find out about them and then see where the information that she had fit into something that they could use and essentially as you guys can probably guess um, this time truth in the garments of story was able to um, succeed in, in warning them about the terrible winter that was about to come um, and so there is a story, and probably not the best one. I haven't, I didn't rehearse that or anything. I was just going strictly off memory. But um, the the reason I'm telling you this, if you haven't figured it out already, is that the biggest pitfall that people make when they're giving informative speeches and speeches in general is that they forget to tell a story, and instead they just beat people over the head with facts and figures. And they think that the naked truth, quote unquote, is going to be enough. And it, the problem is if you only appeal to logos, which is logic, then you'll lose a lot of people because when you talk, um, a lot of information is lost just in the communication process. When you appeal to uh, people's emotions, that is universal. And it's beautiful because the thing is, is that even though you may not grasp everything that I've said, you get the key points. And the emotion, the stronger it is, the more it latches onto you and it resonates. And so um, one, of, one of my favorite quotes from one of my favorite speakers, Tony Robbins, is, um, is about talking through metaphors. And he says that metaphors shape our life's perspective. And that's because the stories that we believe and tell ourselves, um, they're heavy in metaphor. And so whatever we, whatever stories we accept to be true, that those are the ones we believe, and therefore they dictate the direction that we take in our lives. That's very important. But the thing is, if you want to give people information that's important to them, um, you have to kind of wrap it in a gift. It's like Christmas, right? You wouldn't just put a gift under the Christmas tree without wrapping. That's no fun. And it kind of ruins the surprise and, and the whole, you know, purpose of the gift. And the same thing would hold true if you just wrapped it in a paper, a plastic bag. Like, yeah, it's, it's sort of a surprise, but it's just not great. Now, if you had hidden it in a special place and had a scavenger hunt and it was wrapped in this, like, really, that's a fun way to engage the person who the gift is for. And every story you tell, every speech you give should be like a gift. You should, not only should the content inside be good, but the wrapping should be done in such a way that the person is really going to enjoy it and really get into it. And that's how you know that it will resonate with them. And if it resonates with them, then your speech was effective. You've effectively communicated the information and hopefully sparked a fire and an interest in them so that they will either go out and continue to research that information, engage you in more conversation about that via questions and conversation, or go out and tell other people about 
your speech and topic, information that you gave. Um, and we can see too in history, you know, great teachers like Buddha and Jesus and Confucius and, and Plato, right? Um, they spoke through parables and metaphors. They used stories to get to break people out of reality and get them to a place where their mind was open for new information. Um, Jesus, for example, some of his disciples were fishermen, so he used metaphors of, I will teach you to be fishermen of men, right? In order for them to understand the goal that he had for them, right? He would speak in parables to the crowds of people about, um, you know, separating the wheat from the chaff and things like that to give them, because some of them were farmers and so they understood that. Um, when we look at um, 